presents a blood red reindeer nose. Part three, no good answers. Familiar is often comforting. Unless familiar is the inside of an interrogation room. Four gray walls with faded stains, more than hinting of faces smashed into concrete. Granted, I'm no saint, but it's not just the devils getting hammered in this room. And on this occasion, there's no reason for me to be here, which is what's got me worried. Nothing frustrates a cop like a dead end and they'll use whatever head is in their hands to beat through that brick wall. Still, I'm stewing at least an hour before Elfberg and Milkshake enter the room. Without a word, Elfberg sits across from me while the snowman circles the room. My only real worry is if they've been searching my bike. I managed to stash my gun before heading inside, but a blind fool pawing around would eventually find it. Tossing photos on the table, Elfberg says, Recognize any old friends? Black and white pics of dead reindeer clutter the table. Calling them friends wouldn't be near the truth, but they are recognizable. Everyone is a reindeer I grew up with. Each of them ended up a flyer. Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen. They won't be flying anymore. Calm as I can, I go through the pictures. Hiding my relief at not finding any of Vixen. Something odd about each photo catches my eye. The crime scenes look clean, suggesting whoever shot those flyers must have been able to walk right up to them without raising an alarm. However, why they're showing me these photos doesn't sink in until Milkshake talks. He asks, what have you been up to, Red? Nodding, I connect the dots. Not what you're thinking. You got into town around seven, right? Elfberg says, eyeing a notepad. I fold my arms across my chest. Close enough. That's when we were in that diner together. Milkshake taps a photo. And not a half hour later, poor Cupid here got her brain splattered all over a bookshelf. I chuckle. Milkshake slams both fists on the table, growling. You think that's funny? I say, I think it's funny you figuring I rocketed out of that diner shooting clear across town. I mean, my bike's fast, but she ain't that fast. Not impossible, though, Elfberg says, taking notes. I can't help cocking an eyebrow. At the very least, it's not outside probable, he adds, and sounds like you know where Cupid lives. Chewing my tongue, I feel like an amateur. Walked right into that trap. Granted, it's no secret most of the flyers live in the better part of the city. Vixen's the only one who straddled the line. She always planned to, sit and keep her grounded, close to her roots and such. I say, what about these others? Elfberg tells me a shotgun cut Blitzen in half. I'm not sorry to hear it, though judging by the photos, he didn't die right away. It looks like he tried to drag himself across the floor before the curtain closed. Milkshake says he died around 10. At first I perk up, however I catch my own tongue. I've got an alibi. However, that would mean admitting being on the scene when Kalodi was getting shot. I'm not about to put myself in that hot water. So I say, what about the others? Comet got his throat slit sometime around nine. Donner took three to the chest shortly after midnight. Seeing it out, I say, I was at Sugar Plums around midnight. You know this. So what? Milkshake smacks me across the back of the head. Ever heard of the word accomplice? That would mean a friend of some sort. Righto, Red. Milkshake slaps me hard on the back. Righto. I don't exactly have a lot of friends. Me and Elfberg lock eyes. Plus, you know I like to do my own dirty work. Sometimes a record isn't a bad thing. It establishes a pattern of behavior. Knowing that fact causes Elfberg to frown. A sure sign he believes me. Jotting a note, he says, time of death isn't an exact science. Shaking my head, I say, so what's the thought then, huh? I leave town for now on close to ten years, only to come back out of the blue with bloody revenge on my mind. Tell me how that makes sense. Milkshake says, we don't need it to make sense if it's what happened. 
I say. I'm not even touching the stupid on that. Sure enough, that gets me another slap to the side of my head. Hard one, too, suggesting I may have to make time for Detective Milkshake Snickerdoodle so he can learn a thing or two about whom to fuck with. Elfberg says, A lot of things changed after the shortage, Rudy. A lot of people changed, too. You weren't here, so wasn't exactly easy on the outskirts, setting his notepad aside. Elfberg says, I don't doubt that. Still, over a third of this city starved to death. We arrested some folks for literally eating one another. Whose fault is that, I ask pointedly. Depends on who you ask. Elfberg replies. No one says anything, though I'm thinking Big Red. Yet only a complete idiot would say that out loud, let alone in a police station. Talk enough shit about the jolly fat man, well, he knows if you've been bad and that's not good. That said, Elfberg's reply plants a seed in my head. He and Milkshake share a furtive glance. I brace for the old song and dance to begin, screaming in fists, blast beating a confession. However, the familiar tune doesn't start. Instead, Milkshake nods, and Elfberg pulls a small photo out of his notepad. Passing it over, he asks, Recognize him? At risk of sounding racist, nutcrackers often look the same to me. That is until I notice a wood burn etched into this one's wrist. I say, Seems familiar. Name's Glitterspark. Roy Glitterspark. His parents starved during the shortage, but he lucked out. Were they cunts, I asked? Milkshake says, Nope, but Big Red adopted young Glitterspark. Raised him with a whole slew of nutcrackers, conveniently orphaned by the shortage. Looking at the picture, I say, let me guess, raised to guard flyers. Elfberg taps the side of his nose. Sounds like Big Red raised his own legion of loyal guards, everyone faithful and dedicated to their duty. I'm starting to think I'm not in the fire, though the frying pan is still uncomfortably hot. Okay, I say, you don't have to believe me for this to be true. And I lay it out for them, how I saw Glitter Spark unload an Uzi into Kaloti. The unsettling thing is, both cops seem to believe me. Though Milkshake still grumbles, what's his motive? I shrug, fuck should I know? The odd thing is, Kaloti acted like Glitter Spark was on his pay. Furrowing his brow, Elfberg says, that makes no sense. A flyer guard wouldn't be assigned to watch over someone like Kaloti, and they can't be bought. Milkshake chimes in, that lot of true believers. Unless he fell from grace, I say. Then something dawns on me, though I keep it to myself. Glancing across the table, I catch Elfberg's eye. Whatever crossed my mind, a hint of it may have flashed on my face. Gathering up the photos, he gets to his feet. Elfberg pulls open the door, saying, We got nothing to hold you on. For now, Milkshake jabs, but we're keeping an eye on you. Elfberg gestures for me to leave. Walking out, I can feel eyes all over the station watching me go. Word is getting around. Flyers are dying. And rumor has it I'm the lead suspect. I'm not sure that we go is in my best interest. However, that seed Elfberg planted, whether he meant to or not, I've got an idea where to go next.